Hey guys, Willie here with WTF Car Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing my all new 2023 Ram Bighorn 1500 Crew Cab 4x4 with the Midnight Edition. And as most of you guys have been following the channel for a while know, I've had the 2021 Camaro LT1 since February of 2021 and as most of you guys also know, that Camaro was a lease. With the lease expiring, I was considering vehicles like a 2024 or 2023 Camaro 1 SS or possibly even a 2024 Mustang GT. But unfortunately, due to the current economic state, interest rates on in those vehicles were like between 7.5% and 8%, making the monthly payments far more expensive than that of about two, maybe even three years ago. Because of this, I began looking at some trucks, mainly the GMC Sierra SLE with the 5.3 Ecotec V8, the GMC Canyon AT4, I actually kind of like that truck with the new turbo four cylinder, or the Ram Bighorn. I'm sure you guys can see which one I chose. And here's my brand new 2023 Ram Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4, with the Midnight Edition, basically fully loaded outside of the towing package with a total price just under 62,000 bucks. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, of course, since we get the Midnight Edition, we get the black 20 inch rims, 1500 badges blacked out, so is the Hemi. We get the e-torque here too, with the e-torque being outlined in blue and this beautiful billet silver metallic paint color. It's about a $300 cost option. We'll check out the window sticker once we step inside. With the Midnight Edition, we also get a body color front bumper, full front parking sensing, blacked out Ram badge. We don't get tow hooks, unfortunately. You gotta get the off-road package or like the built to serve package to get the tow hooks, but not really a big deal for me. I probably won't be taking this truck off-road very frequently. Again, blacked out Ram badge, unfortunately, no forward-facing camera like we get in the higher trims. I like this metallic black paint for the contrast in the grill too. That's one of the biggest reasons to go with the Midnight Edition. The headlamps, we don't get the full LEDs, but they are blacked out. Headlight housing with halogen headlamps themselves. And the halogen bulb is massive. So although we don't get LEDs with the massive halogen bulb, it actually lights up the road in front of you really well. We mentioned the 20 inch black rims. We'll take a step over here and check them out. Unfortunately, they're also wrapped in all season tires. They're pretty beefy all season tires. The Bridgestone Dueler HL Alenza all seasons. Dimensions being 275-50 R20. So that's pretty beefy setup, 275 wide for the front and rear. Definitely helping the grip, but without the all-terrain tires, don't expect this truck to be nearly as off-road capable as it would be with the off-road package. My dad has the off-road package on his Longhorn Limited Edition, and we took that truck to the Ocala National Forest, and we went off-roading in it, and it did a pretty good job. It'll be interesting to see how this truck will perform on the same trails. I'm sure we'll try it out. But after, after about 45, 50,000 miles, once these tires begin to wear, I do expect to replace them with some beefier all-terrains. The Ram badge in the corner is also blacked out for the Midnight Edition. Same with these mirror caps. We get the LED turn signal on the mirror and a pretty large piece of glass. No blind spot monitoring is a standard feature. Wouldn't be expected since my dad's Longhorn Limited doesn't even get blind spot monitoring. We do get that blind spot pocket and a heated outside mirror. These are also power folding mirrors. We get black trim for the window trim, blacked out B-pillar. Nice to not see the shiny chrome that you get on the top trims. Blacked out door handles too. One minus that I have about this truck, we don't get smart access for the front or the rear. We do get push button start of course, but not intelligent access for easy entry. And my last two vehicles, the Camaro LT1 and the Acura TLX all had smart entry. So this has taken me a little while to get used to. Out rear, same rear wheel and tire setup. We get the black rims with the 275 wide all seasons. Pretty solid amount of ground clearance too. Hopefully you can pick up the drive shaft, springs, shocks, dampers, no leaf springs on the Ram 1500. That's a big reason why I chose the Ram over the GMC, simply because of the ride quality. Out rear, we don't get LED taillights, but it's a typical nice designed Ram taillight with a 4x4 dark smoked exhaust tips. That's another modification I'm planning on doing shortly is a muffler. Expect a new muffler on this truck any week now. Blacked out Bighorn badge in the corner, blacked out Ram badge too, and the grab handle area with the backup camera. Also a gloss black, blacked out 4x4. Tow hitch, this truck can tow about 8,500 pounds with about a 1,900 pound payload. Another complaint that I have with a $62,000 truck, we should get a bed liner. I'm not gonna complain that we don't have a tunnel cover. I'll put a tunnel cover on this truck. I'll also put a bed liner on this truck. But for the price point, it should have come as a standard feature. We also don't have an in-bed AC outlet, but we do get an AC outlet in the interior, so not a big deal. The third brake light's not LED, but we do get a nice zone bed light. So you can press a button and the entire bed area gets lit up. Anyway though, we'll take a step back, get a good look at the rear styling one more time with these aggressive four inch smoked chrome exhaust tips. And while it's stock, let's fire up this 5.7 liter Hemi V8 
and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with e-torque sold by Ram for the 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn. So for 2023, all Hemi V8 Rams come standard with the e-torque for 2022 and the previous years. You can choose between the standard 5.7 or the 5.7 with e-torque. So the e-torque is not a standard hybrid system. It's more of a mild hybrid. It uses a belt driven generator system to kind of give you an additional 130 pound feet of torque off the line in first gear, as well as a little bit better throttle response and also allowing the engine start stop system to run much more efficiently. But other than that, it's basically just a regular 5.7 liter V8, still cranking out a really healthy 395 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque. With a regular cab and a short bed, I've seen zero to 60 times with these Rams in about 5.7, 5.8 seconds. But with the heavier crew cab and four x four, I would expect you to get closer to like the lower six second range. My dad's Longhorn Limited Edition with the off-road package, the running boards, the tunnel cover, skip plates, beefier tires. It does zero to 60 in about 6.3, 6.4. So I would expect this truck to get closer to like six on the dot, maybe a tick quicker. I appreciate the hydraulic struts. We can shut this hood right down, take a step back, walk around this 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn. One more time here, you had my girlfriend's brand new Hyundai Santa Cruz that I'll probably do a video on. Let's do a little size comparison because I know my girlfriend always says how she also has a big truck. But yeah, it is pretty big, the Santa Cruz. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, taking a step inside of the Ram, let's see what we got for about a $62,000 out the door. Well, not out the door, before tax price. So up top, we get soft touch materials, some faux wood trim beneath that. Nice soft armrest. We have two window auto one touch up front, power windows out rear. Aluminum door handle, power folding mirrors, four-way adjustable. We get the nine speaker Alpine sound system here too because we get the level two equipment group. That's a big reason why this Ram's a little bit more towards the expensive side. We do get just about a fully, fully loaded truck here. Two tiers of storage, you'll fit quite a bit of car accessories there. You'll fit a ton of snacks, sandwiches, whatnot in this bottom tier. You'll fit probably two foot longs here, two six inch subs with probably two more foot longs out front. Taking a step inside, we don't get running boards unfortunately, but since we don't get the off-road package with the two inch lift and the beefier tires, it's actually not that tough for me to get in here. I'm a little bit over six feet tall, so if you're shorter, it may be a little bit tougher, but for me, not too difficult. The seats, they look cloth, but they're actually called fabric seats. They get contrast stitching, much more premium than the vinyl seats you would get from the base trucks, but not quite as gushy soft as the Laramie or the Longhorn Limited or even the Limited seats. I've been contacted by the seat cover company who makes like Napa leather seat covers, and they're looking to build specific seat covers for this truck. So once that happens, this is going to be a really impressive interior, especially with the power seats and booming Alpine sound system. But taking a step inside, before we do that, we get the all weather floor mats that have a Ram logo on it taking a step inside foot on the brake engine start stop and everything fires right to life but first thing we notice is the leather wrap steering wheel that's nice for the big horn trim just like the longhorn limited but we don't get the wood grain up top so very similar to what we would get from the laramie the horn area is well grained and rubberized the horn itself loud and aggressive people will definitely be getting out of your way we'll do a window check see if we get dual panes we do get dual panes and the dealership i bought this truck from actually gave us window tints as a standard feature that's nice and left side we have our infotainment adjustments right now we're looking at average fuel economy you can see the trip info trip a and trip b beneath that start stop information audio information beneath that messages screen setup speedometer vehicle info right now we're looking at tire pressure it's a little inconsistent cool temperature trans temperature oil temp oil pressure oil life battery voltage gauge summary and the engine hours beneath that we go right back to where we started with the average fuel economy and to the right of it, we have our current fuel economy. Anyway, this is my personal favorite to look at at all times. On the left side, we have our tack. It shifts at about 56, 5700 RPM, 120 mile an hour speedometer with the fuel level beneath it. On the left side, we get the coolant temperature beneath the tack and we have a voltometer in this digital gauge cluster with the oil pressure to the right. Mileage all the way down below. The stocks have a very satisfying click to it. We don't get auto rain sensing wipers, unfortunately, but the intermittent stock is right here in 
the center. We do get auto headlamps and auto high beams, fog lights and zone light right next to it. Interior brightness, electronic parking brake and electronically adjusted pedals. That's also a really impressive feature. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel, aluminum surround the air vents. Hopefully you get a good look at the pedals down below. The dashboard unfortunately is just hard plastic, but it does have a good graining to it. Hopefully you can pick up the Alpine sound system. It says RAM with a little bit of storage pocket, 12 volt, that's perfect for a radar detector. As you see, I got the radar detector plugged in. Some wood trim around this massive 12 inch touchscreen display. Before we talk about the touchscreen, you get the engine start stop button, gear selector. Check out the back of the camera real quick. Super crisp, high resolution. We get front and rear parking sensing. Since it's just a big horn, we only get the rear camera. But my dad's Longhorn Limited also only gets the rear camera. So you got a really option up to get the front facing cameras on these trucks. Anyway, throwing right back in the park to the left of it, we have our four wheel drive. So we have two wheel drive, four low, four high, and four wheel drive auto. I believe that comes with the level two equipment group. We'll take a quick look at the window sticker in one second. Auto start stop, we can disable for the purpose of this review. The volume dial has a very satisfying resistance to it. We have our air vent adjustments, temperature adjustments, and adjustments for the air vents. And since we don't have the heated and ventilated seats here, I actually prefer this 12 inch screen because with the higher trims with heated and ventilated seats, you have to actually go through the touchscreen to adjust it. But that's not the case here, guys. We get hard buttons for all the climate controls, shortcuts down below, media, comfort, navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, vehicle and apps. And with this level two for 2023, we get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'll check out the media pages with the songs currently playing, Sirius, FM, and Bluetooth. Comfort, once it loads up, you have your climate control settings if you'd like to do it from the touchscreen, but we do get shortcuts on both sides if you don't wanna go through the screen. We also get the new Uconnect 5 system, and this is a really high resolution navigation display. And if this isn't good enough for you, you can simply use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Speaking of Apple CarPlay, here we go. Vehicle settings. We have a mirror dimmer, rear view camera. This is probably the first vehicle I've ever owned that had an auto dimming rear view mirror. So that's also a cool feature. Settings you guys can check out. Display, my profile, safety, camera, wipers, lights, brakes, doors, seats, comfort, and key off options. Awesome. We also have apps. We can check them out. Favorites and all. That's all we got. Comfort apps, navigation apps, and phone apps. Hopefully you can pause, take a look at all of those. My personal favorite to look at right now would be the navigation. Beneath that, you can turn off the traction control, tow haul mode, turn off the front and rear parking sensors. A little bit of storage. I could fit just about my whole hand in the storage pocket. Hopefully I can pick it up for you guys on camera. Two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, and an aux port. Nice little pocket. This holds your phone very well. You can fit three phones in this pocket. It's also removable, AC outlet, and a ton of storage. My entire fist fits in the bottom tier of storage. You'll fit like three bowling balls down here. Push it back and forth. Have a nice coin slot, a rubberized tray, two cup holders, and you'll fit 24 ounce bottles with no problem. And also if you have larger bottles like me, so check this out. This bottle does not fit in this cup holder, but it does fit in there. So the Ram definitely thought it through with that sliding function. I kind of wish all trucks included that. The armrest is super soft and leather wrapped. You can open up this first tier and it is spacious. We get a USB a port in there and a rubberized tray will fit coins, business cards, a ton of car accessories. You can open up the second tier and this is massive. I got all my insurance and crap in here. We have a foldable little partition for this console too. You can move this completely out of the way. You'll fit two bowling balls, a six pack of 12 ounce bottles, and you got your equations, the Pythagorean theorem, hypotenuse, trigonomic ratios, all of that. You shut this thing right up. We have two tiers of glove boxes. The first tier says big horn on it and it's pretty large. I have a cup in there right now. You'll fit a pair of shoes, no problem. And we get a light. The bottom tier, let's open it up. It's not the largest, but it's large enough. You'll fit 15, 20 license plates. You'll fit a pair of shoes in there with no problem. If you're under a size seven or so, should be able to fit two pairs of shoes. The rear view mirror is basically frameless. It's auto dimming. We get three garage home link settings on this mirror visor. The interior lights uh, appear to be not LED, but they should still do the job perfectly fine. We have a fifth opening window back here too. With a click of a button, it opens right up. That's nice if you wanna drive your windows down and don't wanna hear the ridiculous amount of buffering. We did mention that we get the nine speaker Alpine audio system with a subwoofer and it sounds incredible. I actually think it sounds better in this truck than it does in my dad's Longhorn Limited Edition. I know it probably doesn't make sense, but that's just my first observation. Continuing along, that's about it though, guys, for the front seat. Let's take a quick look at this window sticker, see any features I may have missed on this 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4. 
With about a $50,000 base price, you guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. The billet silver metallic clear coat paint is 300 bucks, 2545 for the night edition, giving us the blacked out door handles, blacked out mirror covers, black headlamp bezels too, 20 by nine inch premium painted and polished wheels, 275-55 R20 Owl all season tires, and an anti-spin differential for the rear axle. 3845 bucks gives us the Level B Bighorn Equipment Group. That gives us the two-way power lumbar, adjustable driver's seat, connected travel and traffic services, you connect five nav with a 12-inch touchscreen display, electronic shift-on-demand transfer case, that gives us the four-wheel drive auto two, second row in-floor storage bins, class four receiver hitch, 4G LTE, Sirius with six months, nine amplified speakers with a subwoofer, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, front fog lamps, Google Android Auto, and it's wireless here. Heated front seats, heated steering wheel, front and rear parking sensing, eight-way power driver's seat, power adjustable pedals, power folding mirrors, rear power sliding window, remote start system, ramp connect services, front and rear rubber floor mats by Mopar, that's 160 bucks. 3,000 bucks for the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi with e-torque and a 23 gallon fuel tank included. After about a $2,000 destination charge, we're totaled out at $61,605. Of course, that's not what I paid for this truck. I'll of course make a video and show you guys what I did pay for this truck. Fuel economy, 19 MPG, 17 in the city, 22 in the highway. Not realistic. I've averaged about 17.3 MPGs and 512 miles, but I have spent a lot of time idling. But I've also spent a decent amount of time on the highway. Before we go out back, we also have a sunglass holder. I didn't have that in the Camaro. That's pretty cool. That's about it though for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there and leave a comment. Let me know if you guys want to see a review on this 2024 Santa Cruz. It's also pretty well loaded of a truck. Hopping out back though, up top, we get hard plastic material to be expected, but for this price point, it would be nice if they gave us some type of injection molded plastic. We get more of that faux wood trim, which looks like it's popping out. I guess I'm gonna be making a quick trip to the dealership coming out soon. Some aluminum beneath that wood trim, nice padded armrest. The window is not auto one touch, but it's still a power window, aluminum door handle, addition wall, your Alpine speakers, and a massive two tier storage compartment. You'll fit like a 14, 16 inch sub in there, probably stack two on top of each other. Big gulp and you'll probably stack two six inch subs right up there. The rear seats, we'll put my POV hat back on the passenger seat. I got the second set of seats lifted up so when we put our dog back here, she got like enough room to sleep, which is really convenient. This is a super practical truck. I just don't wanna get dog hair all over it. So I'm gonna leave that seat up. We get the all weather floor mats. The legroom is absolutely fantastic. You can also lift the rear seat up completely if you'd like to. We don't get the additional storage, but because of this, you can lay a sleeping bag down here. And if you get kicked out of the house, you can in an emergency situation, sleep in the back of your 2023 Ram Bighorn. Taking a step inside though, I'm a little bit over six feet tall and I got well over a foot of knee room, like a foot and a half of knee room. Headroom, I have like three, four inches. Ram gives you a nice little cutout. And as you see, we get two booming Alpine speakers that shoot directly into the rear passenger skull. Really impressive system. The interior lights back here. These actually appear to be LED. If not LED, I apologize, but they still do the job nevertheless. We get two air vents back here. That's nice for a big horn, two USB-A and C ports. We don't get the AC outlet. You gotta go to the higher trim to get that for the back seat and for the bed or get the bed utility group. But either way, this truck does not come equipped with that. We get two additional cup holders. I got my portable in there at the moment. You'll fit 24 ounce bottles with no problem. We get map pockets behind both of the front seats. Hook, no grab handle, nice for a suit or a dress. No panoramic moonroof either. Ram is one of the only trucks in the segment that gives you a panoramic moonroof. Them and like Toyota with the Tundra, but this truck, of course, does not have it. That's about it though, guys, for the back seat. That's about it for this truck in general. Let's hop out to the other side so I can get a better walk around of it. But overall, guys, it's a beautiful truck. Once I get the bed liner installed, once I get the muffler replaced and maybe get a tunnel cover, it'll be a finished product and I'm loving it so far. I know you guys think that I'm a sports car driver at heart, but if you lived in Florida, you'd understand why I went with the truck. Most of the roads around here are straight lines covered in bumps. We get floods and the Camaro is just not a really practical vehicle all around, especially for someone like me. I like to fish. I like to go on long trips on long highways and for long trips, this truck is just a far superior vehicle. Performance wise, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of my all new 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn 4x4. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My first impressions though, check this out, ride quality, unbelievable. I used to avoid the crap out of that in my Camaro. 
it would have probably broken in half if I hit that more than once or twice. Taking a step out here, about half throttle, it pulls hard. Woo! That's only about half throttle. This thing can rip. Zero to 60, around six seconds. And it feels like it. I wouldn't be surprised if after a couple modifications, maybe you can be seeing zero to 60 in the five second range. I'm of course not gonna be doing too many modifications here. And that's one thing I gotta disable. Every time there's a red light camera, this truck for some reason thinks it's best for me if it beeps at the top of its lungs right at me. I wish it didn't do that, but I'm sure there's something in the settings that I can disable. We'll check out the body roll real quick. Compared to my dad's off-road package, this body roll is significantly more limited. Throttle feels super responsive with this lighter weight vehicle. And I do like the rumble from this V8. Once I get that muffler upgraded, whew, I can't wait to show you guys that video because it's gonna sound really sweet. Over the bumps though, this truck feels so good. Low end torque feels excellent thanks to this e-torque system. And with these all season tires compared to my dad's all terrains, the steering actually feels more on center. It doesn't quite feel like a Chevy truck. Those new Chevy trucks or GMC trucks feel really good when it comes to steering, at least at low speeds. And this doesn't quite feel as good as that, but compared to the off-road package Ram 1500, this definitely feels a little bit better. Taking a step out here, bumps, good ride quality. It's just such a nice truck. I know it's a big horn. It's not even considered a luxury truck until you cross the Laramie. But with the level two equipment group with the um, midnight edition, this is pushing what would be called a luxury truck. It's so quiet in here. The sound system is fantastic. I know I can't demonstrate it for you guys due to copyright purposes, but the seats are super comfortable. We'll see if they get even more comfortable once I put the Napa leather seat covers on. And I'll shout out the company, of course, that sends them to me. But until that happens, I'll keep that a little bit of a secret. One of these days, I'll try out that service road. I just wanna get permission from local officers so i don't have to end up getting escorted out of there and one day i will show that to you guys but in the meantime right here there should be a perfect spot for an acceleration off the line off the line no brake torque just on the gas Ooh, traction control so we'll turn the traction control off where is it there it is traction control off off the line on the gas Ooh, wow This thing is a burnout machine. I was not expecting it to roast those tires like that. Sheesh, so with the lighter weight, guys, this thing is way quicker than my dad's Longhorn Limited Edition. I've been telling him that this feels like it's jumpier off the line. We'll try another acceleration on our way back, this time in four wheel drive auto, and see what changes up. Turning radius here is really sharp for a full size truck. I believe the length of this thing is like over 233 inches or right at 233 inches. So this is a large, large vehicle. As soon as we get the chance, we'll cross these gates and I'll throw this truck into four wheel drive auto and try one more acceleration off the line. Come to a complete stop, four wheel drive auto. Boom, four wheel drive auto, traction control on. Let's see if we can turn it off. We turned it off, four wheel drive auto, off the line, on the gas. Woo! Yeah, that's way quicker off the line. <laughs> this truck can freaking move. I can't wait to show it to you guys after I get the muffler put on and the bed liner and the cover. But in the meantime, I am loving this truck. If you're in the market for a full size truck, you need to tow but you don't want something from a heavy duty because the ride quality is just not as good and you're not looking to spend 70, $80,000 on a truck. If that's the case, I would definitely recommend checking out the Ram Bighorn. Either check out the Ram Bighorn and load it up with level two and stuff like that, or just get the Laramie. The Laramie will start at around $63,000, $64,000 with the V8, which is about $2,000 on top of the fully loaded Bighorn. But then you get the leather seats with the suede Alcantara contrast. It's a little bit nicer in the outside. And everybody knows that Laramie, or Laramie is when the luxury truck from Ram really begins. But if you're looking to save a few thousand bucks, you like the Midnight Edition. I mean, who doesn't like the Midnight Edition? This is a badass looking truck. And if that's what you're looking for, I would 100% recommend checking out the 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4 
with the Midnight Edition. And a big thanks to all you guys for watching and sticking around from the beginning of this channel. Without you guys, you know the channel is just not possible. And I really appreciate all the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.